Welcome to the Copper Spice YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us. In this video, we are going to discuss variable templates and a reason to use them. Variable templates. One of the questions we have been thinking about is why were variable templates added to C++? What problem do they solve? When should they be used? And why are there very few examples other than Pi? In order to explain how we found a need for a variable template, it requires understanding the problem we needed to solve. The basic idea is that variable templates provide an effective mechanism to support a clean API. So let's take a look at our use case, discover why the design was flawed, refactor the code, and then show how a variable template made the new solution even better. Establishing a signal slot relationship means that when some event occurs, then a method is called in response. The event is the signal and the response is the slot. In CopperSpice, you set this up by calling a method named connect and passing several parameters. To simplify the use case, we're going to reduce the connect arguments to just the slot method. The slot method will be invoked when the connection is triggered. Before C++11, the only way to specify which method to invoke was by passing the name of the method and its arguments as a string. The first example shows the slot method is set color and the argument is an int. This is slow since strings are being saved and compared at runtime. Errors are difficult to trap since there is no way to type check anything at compile time. By changing the code to pass a method pointer, the parameters for the slot method will automatically be validated by the compiler. It's always better to have an error show up at compile time rather than runtime. The syntax to pass a method pointer involves applying an ampersand prefix to the class name, followed by two colons and then the name of the method. The data types for any arguments in set color are not part of the method pointer. All of this works very nicely, but it falls apart when there are overloads for the set color method. Consider the situation when there are two overloads for set color. In this example, we have one overload with an argument of int and another overload with an argument of std string. Having overloads does not cause any issues if you were using the string syntax, since you just specify the arguments as part of the string. However, with the method pointer syntax, there is a complication, since there is no place to specify the argument we want to use. So given the example on line 3, which overload should be used? At compile time, this code will produce an error message indicating you have an ambiguous overload. One way to indicate the correct overload is by adding a static cast. This provides the extra information the compiler needs in order to determine which overload you intended. We have highlighted the static cast in yellow. This syntax is a bit repetitive and complex. Both sets of parentheses are required. They are not just for readability. You need to repeat the name of the class in the static cast, and the star is not optional either. The argument data type we actually care about comes at the end, where it's a bit hard to see. This solution is really awkward, and we decided to find a better approach. Our first idea was to change the static cast and use a templated free function. We named it csmpcast, since the function is replacing a static cast. With the new design, the method arguments for set color are specified as normal template parameters. Multiple sets of parentheses were removed, and the argument types 
are easier to locate. This is an improvement to the API, which was our goal. So how did we implement this templated free function? The design requires two separate templated functions. The first one is used when the method is declared with no arguments. Since nothing will be passed, the class name template parameter will be deduced. This deduction is based on the data type of the method pointer. This may seem unusual, but this technique is used heavily in metaprogramming. The second template function is used when you pass arguments for the slot method set color. The template parameters will go into the parameter pack named args, and the class name will still be deduced. If we decided to add another overload where the parameters for set color are bool and int, the second function is called and everything works as expected. These two free functions provide a correct solution for almost every set of data types. Sadly, this design failed in an odd way. If the overload set for set color is int comma bool and the other one is int comma float, everything works fine and the program compiles. Now suppose we change the overload set. One overload is int and the other overload is int comma double. This combination fails to compile with GCC, and the error message says template argument deduction failed. Our templated free function design is not valid on all compilers for all combinations of types, so we had to refactor again, and this is where the variable template shows up. From the very beginning of C++, the template keyword has been used with functions and classes. Variable templates were added in C++14, and they provide a way to simplify the syntax. They do not really add any new functionality to the language. Let's compare two blocks of code which are functionally equivalent. In the first block, we have a templated class, which contains one static data member which is initialized to the size of t. The syntax to calculate value 1 is complicated, since you must know the name of the static variable. In this code, it is length, but it could have been anything. The second example uses a variable template to accomplish the same task. The first two lines declare a variable template called variable name. This is initialized to the size of the data type t. In order to access value 2, we use the name of the template variable followed by the template parameter of double. Now let's look at our new design, which uses a variable template to provide a clean API. In our original design, we had a templated method with two template parameters the variadic template parameter args, and the class name. In our current design, the work is now done by a templated method of a templated class. By moving the variadic template to the class, the argument types for set color are still part of the parameter pack. The class name template was never passed in the old design. It was deduced. This is why we can use a function object in the new design. Finally, on the last two lines of our example, here is the variable template. The only purpose of these lines is so we can keep the function like syntax. At first glance, it may not be obvious that csmpcast has changed from a function name to a variable. When this variable is evaluated, it will instantiate the internal class and then invoke the function call operator. It took a bit of work to show this example, and ultimately, the variable template only changed some syntax. There are not many places where a variable template can be used or needs to be used. This is why there are so few good examples. The best way to think about a variable template 
is simply as a technique to improve code readability. For more information about the Copper Spice project, please visit our website at www.copperspice.com. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the content of value. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment on this video or send us an email. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and come back for our next video.